EA Sports. It's in the game. How's it going, everyone? And welcome to the EA Sports Retro Channel, where today I'm going to finally show you some of the small tweaks and modifications I've done to this old version of NHL 2001 on the PC. Now, the reason why I decided to make this modification was to, in my opinion, finish off the game by adding a few basic items that were visually missing. So the first thing I worked on was the rosters. Back when I used to play NHL PA 93 on the Genesis, I noticed the game was labeled for the upcoming year, but had rosters from the previous season, which drove me nuts. Prior to NHL 95, you couldn't make trades or update teams, so you were stuck using players from out of date rosters, and that sucked, especially if there were big trades or free agent signings that year. Now I get it, the game is released before the NHL's new season, and each team's rosters aren't set at the time of release. So of course, you're going to have to deal with the ratings and stats based on last year's performance. Thank goodness for the modding scene for PC games, because the same out-of-date roster issue also occurs in NHL 2001. But since there are a bunch of tools out there for roster edits and player creation, I took the time to update things accordingly. I looked at team rosters from HockeyReference.com, which has a ton of historical data and allows you to see who is on the roster during the 2000-2001 season. I decided to keep it as close as possible to the rosters from opening day in 2000, but I also added players that made appearances at one point throughout the season, mainly prospects and minor leaguers. The biggest problem with adding players to the database though is the lack of player portraits, so I decided to fill in the gaps by making sure all the newly created players had pictures. Then I realized that there were a lot of trades and a lot of really old player portraits that hadn't been updated since 1999. I mean, look at Detroit in those turtleneck sweaters. What the hell is that? And ladies and gentlemen, that's when the project started to take on a life of its own. Six months and 582 players later, I'm proud to report that each team has a fully populated list of players with up-to-date portraits. Now some of you might be thinking, what's the big deal? They're just pictures. Just grab them off the internet and a little Photoshop and bada bing, you're done. It's not that big of a project. Well, hold on for a second there. The game had three versions of each photo for each player. There's a large player portrait shown during the profile and matchup screens, a small photo used for the line management and trading screen, and a medium sized portrait used in game when the profile overlay was shown during cutscenes like goals or penalties. Let's do some quick math, shall we? 582 players times 3. That's 1,746 photos. So, uh, yeah, it took a while. But then I had to import them into proper file types for the game archive, then test them to make sure they corresponded to the right player, and make adjustments as needed. Some teams had player photos that were old and out of date. Take Calgary, for instance. They stopped using this style of jersey in 2000 and moved to this one. But the player photos didn't reflect that. Dallas did the same thing, but EA shipped the game with player photos wearing the old jersey and the new one. I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to consistency, so I redid a number of these portraits to match. The expansion teams of Columbus and Minnesota started playing in October of 2000, so there were no photos available of players wearing their proper jerseys. I used a number of photos from September of 2001, which was a year later, and some Photoshop magic to place jerseys on the portraits in order to fake it. It works fairly well in my opinion. So there you have it, the rosters and the players are completed. Next up are the arena intro shots. Yeah I know, it's literally a 10 second load screen, but it's a little something that helps with the immersion of the player in the game. I know that on some TV broadcasts there's a skyline shot or flyby of the city leading into the game, but since I'm interested in consistency, I figured that it would be nice to include landmarks like Madison Square Garden, or show off the new rinks, well new at the time, like Toronto, Atlanta, Boston, and more. So I updated a bunch of those shots and the loading screen text that says which arena you're playing in instead of just the city. And there we go. It's not the greatest game by far, but at least these small graphical improvements will help the game feel a little bit more complete. 
I have some greater aspirations to mod the game even further. For now, I'm content to get this game closer to a finished product, as it should have been when it was released in September of 2000. It only took 20 years. Stay tuned for the next set of updates and modding ideas. Thanks again for watching.